In this tutorial, we're going to explore two concepts that we hope will change the way you look at strumming and make you a better guitar player. Concept number one is that written out and verbalized strum patterns are guidelines, they're not rules. So they're there to start guiding us down the path towards creating a musical and appropriate guitar part. Concept number two is that experimentation makes us better guitar players. And not only that, but it helps us develop our personal style. So we're going to be applying those two concepts to creating strumming patterns. I'll demonstrate two basic strum patterns and I'll play them robotically at first, like I'm just reading them off the page. Then we'll apply those two concepts and see how musical we can make them. The first strum pattern we're going to look at uh, uses all downstrokes. We're going to be on a G chord, a D chord, and a C2 chord. Chord diagrams are right there beneath the video player. We're going to do eight downstrokes per chord. So robotically, it sounds like this. D, C2, All right, and now we are going to apply the two concepts and see how musical we can make this. So to review, concept number one, the written out strum pattern, which is all downstrokes, is a guideline. It's not a rule. It's not something we have to stick to if we don't want to. It's there as a guideline to help us. Uh, and concept number two is experimentation makes us better guitar players. So our pick, if you look, if we're doing downstrokes just on the G chord, is also coming up every time. So if we accidentally nick the strings or we want to nick the strings every once in a while on an upstroke, that could be nice. So already we're sounding a little bit less robotic. And it doesn't have to be in the exact same spot every single time either. It just can be after the second downstroke, after the fourth downstroke. Um, that's one thing to experiment with. And that's one thing that we can look at as not a rule, but as a guideline. Maybe we want to accent certain beats, and that's not written on the page. That's OK. A lot of times with uh, an eight, eight downstroke pattern like that, we could think about accenting the first, the fourth, and the seventh uh, downstrokes. Let's try that once. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 What if we tried that and we threw in a couple upstrokes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's take it a step further. If we're using open chords like this, we can always throw in hammer-ons, like our on the G chord, our pointer finger. It's great to hammer on from open A, and then hammer on to the second fret of A. On the D, we can either go hammer on to the G string or hammer on to the high E string. And on the C2, we can always hammer on to that D string. So what if we tried hammering on a little bit with that too? Already right there, we've come up with a pretty musical, uh, tasteful part. You could also throw in some palm mutes. And all I'm doing there is just kind of bouncing my palm up and down as I'm strumming. So you get the idea. We're, all we're doing here is we're experimenting a little bit. We're um, accepting the freedom that we have to take a strum pattern that's been written out or been verbalized to us and make it our own and add things in, subtract things, add in upstrokes, do hammer-ons and pull-offs, anything you want. Just experiment and see how musical we can make it. So we started with... ending with
All right, our second basic strum pattern is going to use the exact same chord progression, but we'll play it like this. Down, 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 up, up, down, down. This is probably the most consistently used strum pattern in all the songs that we teach, so I just played it kind of robotically. Now let's apply the two concepts. So concept one, we're going to use that strum pattern as a guideline, not a rule. And concept number two, experimentation makes us better guitar players, so we're going to experiment with some different ways to make that a little more musical. So for this strum pattern, let's start by aiming at different areas of the strings to see if we can give it a little bit more of a musical feel. So um, instead of... basically hitting all the strings equally with every stroke. Maybe we start by just aiming at the low strings, then we switch over to the higher strings. Let's go over to the D. So I'm switching it up a little bit there. Sometimes I'm aiming low, sometimes I'm aiming high. But the point is, I'm not aiming at every single string with every single strum. It goes from... to something more like... Already, I think that makes it a little bit more musical. Now, let's think about adding in an upstroke or a downstroke here and there, wherever we feel like it might be appropriate. So we'll still be uh, kind of aiming at some different spots in the strings, and we'll add in an upstroke or a downstroke whenever we want. Now let's keep going with it and let's do some hammer-ons and pull-offs just like we did in the first drum pattern. Now let's feel free to do some palm muting. Um, what I'm going to be doing here is just kind of bouncing my palm up and down off the strings as we're strumming right by the saddle down here. All right, so you get the idea. Um, already we've come from the start, which was. To this. So these concepts are meant to be freeing. Uh, concept number one, strum patterns are guidelines, they're not rules. And concept number two, experimentation makes us better guitar players. And the nice thing about working on this skill is that you have an unlimited number of strum patterns to work with. You can make them up on the spot, start very robotically, and then work on slowly but surely adding in a few of these techniques uh, that we went over to make it more and more musical.